Yeah, you were asking how long a uh, railroad reel will would run. On the old ones, I don't know what the mileage is, but on the old ones, they would put a new tire on the wheel. And what they're currently doing here in Alaska is they are recontouring them. They have a milling machine, actually, that they slowly rotate the wheel around on this machine, and there's a milling head, big milling head with a bunch of different shaped inserts on it. They're placed in to give the proper taper and a radius, and it just makes the diameter smaller. They do that a few times until the wheel is too small, and then they pitch the wheel away. And that's what they do currently here in Alaska, because I watched them. <laughs> um, I don't know what they're doing in all the rest of the American Railroading Association world. Hmm. <laughs> So the wheels are connected by a single axle? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, your two wheels are on a axle. They are pressed on, um, I forget what the tonnage is, but it's a fair amount of tonnage. It will score up the bore. It will do a not perfect thing. They don't heat shrink them. They, they force them on. Um, the press, I think, is a 500-ton press. I forget how much of a press they actually use on the axles, though, when they press them. They have a minimum amount. If it does not press with this amount of tonnage, it's rejected. Oh. And what they will do is um, they will make a mix of things. They'll, as, they, as the wheels get worn out, they'll, they'll press a wheel off. They will true up the axle so it has a good surface again, and they will, depending on which wheel came off of where, they will bore the axle out a little bit. So there's a little mixing and matching. New axles start out large, and new wheels start out small to go on a worn axle. And they mix and match them and clean them up so that they can uh, put them together, because between pressing them on and pressing them off, they get scored up where if you did it a second time, it would end up out of round from the pieces of metal that are smushed in between. Yeah. Where you can press it. Um, there's a trick they do in industry on that is they leave, instead of pressing for a long distance straight, but for a lot of industrial things where you're going to pull it on and off, what they'll do is they'll leave a relatively flat taper. So it's tapered over maybe 10 or 12 inches, but it's only tapered 20 thousandths of an inch. So it will quickly move and lock the same as if it is straight, but you only have the scraping for a matter of maybe an inch where they're actually pressing together. But once you've pressed that inch on, it's, it's tight and it doesn't move. Uh, but I don't think they want to be doing that on the locomotives because just in the case that it got pounded over an inch from hitting something really rough, now it's totally loose. Yeah. And you wouldn't want that on a locomotive because of safety. Hmm. Yes, Why? we could make some kind of a lock that keeps it from moving the initial amount and lots of different ideas. It's just how... How we decide to do different things as people and uh, lots of different ideas out there and they don't heat fit them because then it'd be harder to take it off no they don't heat fit them because it's just a nuisance oh okay They're just looking for quick quick easy there's a lot of wheels to change in a week <laughs> It's just we want to do it easy. If I was designing the system, I would heat shrink them. I would. I just, I like heat shrinking. I would have a whole system set up where the wheel drops in. It's got induction heating. We pull the wheel off, put another wheel on. We keep them all within pretty much the same size, not much machine work. That's the way I would do it. But it wasn't me. I didn't get to be lord and master over the railroad procedures. So I didn't do it. No, it's not me. Yeah. I, I only get to choose a little bit of things in this industrial world. I've seen quite a few different things, but I only get to do a choice on a little bit of them.